Hey, what's up guys? I'm Bright Torn and welcome back to Victoria 3 as we were playing as the United States. Alright, so let's just go ahead and jump on into today's episode. I'm going to get this uh, paper mill finished up and then we'll take a look and see where we're at on the money. If we're still in the negative, yeah, we're still uh, still trying to build up our gold reserve. So I think we're just going to keep these two going for now. We also got Shogun. We're researching this. Uh, instead, we were, uh, you know, getting the the uh, spread, the technology spread from it, and it's going to do one main thing here. We're unlocking smooth bores for the arms industries. Uh, so essentially, that's going to result in us producing less small arms, more artillery at the cost of steel, while also giving us some extra, more advanced jobs, engineers and machinists. Uh, so we're probably not going to want to change that up right now. We'll take a look at the cost. I mean, artillery is a bit expensive, so let's just take a look and see where the uh, small arms is, because if that's really cheap, then it would make sense to transition it. And, I mean, it's it's certainly cheaper than artillery. And, you know, we only actually have one level of arms industries. That's something we're going to need to actually improve. So, yeah, I think we can switch it up without much negative effect. And it shouldn't be a, a problem here. Oh, that was munition plants that I was thinking of. We only have one of those. Uh, we have four levels of arms uh, arms industries. So do we want to change from cannons over to smooth bores? You can see that this would result in them losing money. Uh, and they're already losing money right now. So probably would not be wise to transition them. Yeah, uh, there's definitely no benefits of doing this right now. So again, it's something that we'll maybe uh, do once we go to war. Like perhaps when we go to war with the, uh, the Mexicans. I think that would make the most sense. Uh, also, we're currently getting field works, which is just a nice passive bonus for army defense. So that's always helpful getting those passives. And again, we're just going to let these build. Oh, that's what I was supposed to be doing. Well, we just actually invested in home affairs and got up to the max level that we currently have unlocked. We can't get up to level five just yet uh, so yeah it's gonna help us out quite a bit when it comes to like radicals but we have very little chance of passing this guys with our our three percent uh, success chance I think the what that notification was about probably another reduction of the chance of, of succeeding here that seems like this is not gonna be passing guys yeah we can go in and cancel it and start it again sometime in the future because uh, clearly this is not going to uh, to work right now despite the high amount of endorsement yeah we just we just failed on it and sometimes that happens and you know sometimes it's better to just cut your losses and and come back to it later uh, so we can always work on something else for instance we could try changing up our citizenship laws though that would uh, piss off some people yeah uh, two groups there including one of ones that's currently in our government so might want to wait on that. Uh, these, uh, everything else over here is good. And we could do the health system. So we could change that up. We have the ability, we cannot go to protected speech. We only go backwards there. I uh, could do the propertied women. That would also irritate quite a few people though. So really I think the only options here is a health system. Uh, private health insurance is, is not available to us. It's just public health insurance. Uh, which the industrious do oppose and this would result in them going into the negative they're a pretty powerful faction right now so you know what we might just wait to do anything here guys just not even work on a law sometimes you know you'll go many years where you're not working on laws if you just don't have any that uh, you want to pass or that you can pass so that's fine we'll concentrate on other things uh, continue industrializing and colonizing these territories here. Uh, we don't actually have any rivals right now. And we could start working on, you know, creating issues with Mexico. So like, for instance, we could start hurting their economy by cutting them off from trade. I'm gonna assume that they, well, that's interesting, uh, but I'm gonna assume that they're probably trading with us quite a bit uh, where they're, uh, you know, very powerful rich neighbor so it makes sense that they're probably trading for some of our goodies 
Uh, but what's interesting here is that the Southern Planters have left the uh, movement, the political movement, to restore legacy slavery. That was hurting their opinion, and so therefore now they're happy all of a sudden. And uh, we're getting that influence bonus from them. Yeah, the uh, political movement has disbanded because they're the only ones that were supporting it. And, and that does happen, uh, eventually. Once there's just not enough support for it. Alright, so fractional distillation has been unlocked. Uh, this is another one that we got through tech spread. And this will allow us to get more liquor at the cost of groceries, glass, and sugar. So probably not going to be getting uh, anything from that right now either. Again, sometimes it just takes a little while uh, before you actually want to make use of some of the technology that you get. Uh, we do need to build more stuff. We've got a good little chunk of money here. Yeah, we've got uh, 6.14 thousand coming from the investment pool, so we definitely want to go ahead and get something. Uh, I'm glad that nitroglycerin is uh, being spread through, you know, going through the tech spread, because I don't really want to research it, because I, I highly doubt we'll, we'll make use of it. We'll probably just wait until we get dynamite, uh, because of, you know, how costly it can be. Uh, didn't we already do this event? I feel like we did. Yeah, I could have swore we had done this already. All right, well, we're going to do the same option that we did before. Offer some assistance, and of course, that's going to cost us some money. Uh, I don't recall it firing twice when I went through this the first time. I think it was just the one time. Uh, but I did notice that we did still have uh, the notification here, the Indian removal. So, yeah, uh, I guess uh, it's not done yet. But strange, because, again, I, I don't recall it's, it happening twice. Uh, but let's go ahead and get some stuff building. Uh, I assume, yeah, that railroads are, are still what we're going to want to be working on. And since we are building railroads, we're going to need to start working on coal as well. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, we will do, let's do a railroad and then we'll do uh, coal. So as far as uh, where we want to build the railroads, you can see we've already done, uh, well, I thought we did Massachusetts here. Uh, apparently not. We just did New York and maybe Pennsylvania. That was the other one we did. So let's actually sort this here so I know where we've gotten them. Pennsylvania, despite the fact that we have uh, built one level of railway, they don't have much infrastructure. I'm assuming that's just because the rails haven't been fully built up there yet. Yeah, that's what I would assume. Uh, looking at the south here, you can see that they need rails. and yeah, they clearly need rails. So we're going to want to get them some rails. And then, yeah, all throughout here, they just don't have very much infrastructure. So we're going to need to improve it over there as well uh, further west. But let's do Virginia next. Though, I, I kind of like when the rails fully connect. So I think we're going to do Maryland, even though they don't need it right now. So we'll do one in Maryland. And, yeah, we'll do one in Virginia as well. And, and then we want to go ahead and start working on the coal mines. And I uh, probably should pay attention to where you put it, too, because certain areas seem to be having some issues with the, the infrastructure. Just might not want to build there. I think we're going to start building some coal mines over here in Montana. So we'll just get one there for now. Yeah, I'm not going to get too crazy with the building, because we're trying to build up those gold reserves. Uh, we will go ahead and take the coal mines above the railway right there. Uh, one thing I, I haven't shown yet is the fact that there is a production method for the construction sector that you can change. That'll uh, change the goods that they're using. Uh, so we're doing iron frame buildings. So that does require quite a bit of iron. And uh, if you go down some, that's one way to effectively reduce the cost of construction without getting rid of any of the construction sectors. Uh, so that's one thing you can do. It also earns some more money. As you can see, the substitution would result in it being uh, more profitable. Uh, but of course, you're gonna get a lot less construction. But if you're not using it anyways, and it's an easy way to flip-flop here. Uh, the only problem, of course, is how it changes employment. Uh, those machinists are going to get fired. And yes, there's more labor jobs, but it doesn't change the fact that the machinists are fired and, and they're going to become radicals because they just got fired. So they're not going to be happy about that. Also, it's going to have some impacts on the, uh, the price of goods, too. Uh, so I haven't changed that, or I haven't shown that. Another thing I haven't shown yet is urban centers. Uh, urban centers have their production methods, too. And so, like, we got gas uh, streetlights here, increasing more services. That's the main thing urban centers do, is uh, provide the services. So having the gas streetlights is basically taking coal and, and letting us get a lot more services. 
Uh, we could go to public trams here, and that will obviously rapidly increase the, the cost of transportation if we try to do it in all of our urban centers, so we don't want to do that. We all, might want to do that eventually, uh, particularly as uh, you know labor becomes a problem, because this will save us a ton of labor jobs in the urban centers. So something to look at a bit later. And as of right now, this is, you have the, the churches as well. You can have state-run churches or free churches, and we don't have any other options uh, in that regard. So you have the urban centers. That's one thing that you know, just automatically builds, uh, automatically constructs in the cities, uh, in the states, based on how urbanized they are, how many people you have. So you can mess with those, make some adjustments. They got their own uh, PMs, their own production methods. All right, so yeah, we, we know transportation is quite expensive in our market, and uh, that's why we're getting these, these rails going. And Daniel Webster has died. Doesn't really matter to us. Though one thing I did notice that I hadn't noticed before that was interesting, we're gonna take a look what's going on there. I think it's in Africa, that's all the Ashanti. Uh, but yeah, one thing I did notice is that Andrew Jackson is once again our president because uh, the rural folk apparently got the most votes. Uh, I, I didn't see that. I know the Democratic Party did. Oh, okay, that's what happened. So the Democratic Party got the most votes, and the Southern Planters, we have done such a good job reducing their influence, their clouds, that uh, the rural folk are now the most powerful uh, in the Democratic Party. So that's the reason why uh, Andrew Jackson is, is once again our president. So getting all the uh, bonuses and negatives that, that he grants. And I did forget to take a look at what's going on over here. Uh, I think the reason why I've been called on it, of course, is because we do have an interest over here due to Liberia. And uh, looks like they're going to attempt to... Oh, no, they just want to open the Ashanti market. Okay, so they're not even attempting to you know, annex them. All right, so we're just going to declare neutrality. We don't care what's going on really outside of uh, North America at the moment. So we're not going to get involved in that at all. Uh, the mining accidents. So we've seen this event before. Just popped up again. Uh, so who do we want to strengthen? Trade unions, the rural folk, or the industrialists? And who do we want to rad radicalize? Uh, we're going to do... I think we're going to do this one again. Though we could look at the opinion that we currently have with them. You know, we got plus seven there, plus eight there. I mean, everybody's pretty happy. And they're incredibly loyal, the rural folk. So we're just going to go with the industrialists here. We do want to strengthen them some. And yeah, it looks like, you know, we're seeing some price changes here. There's always adjustments to the prices. Uh, clearly, we got a lot of stuff we got to build to kind of improve some stuff. And it looks like Arizona is done. It's been colonized. Okay, so we got like a little piece of the mountains here. That's about it. Uh, just barely attached. Yeah, you just got American New Mexico here. So a little patch here. It's looking kind of strange. Uh, but yeah, there's not really much left to colonize. Just finishing up Montana at this point. That's all we got left. Okay. Well, it looks like the British and the Brazilians have ended their rivalry. So yeah, because we're not colonizing... Well, we'll, we'll wait. Uh, once we finish this up, what we might want to do is just get rid of uh, that institution. Because that is an institution. That means it is costing us bureaucracy. So something to consider. Uh, maybe just completely get rid of that. Uh, let's go ahead and get some more stuff building. Uh, we got a lot of things to fix, and, and clearly transportation is still the primary issue. Now, one of the things here is with, with constructing all these railroads is it's not producing a ton of the uh, transportation because we would, if we wanted to prioritize transportation, we'd need to switch over to wooden passenger carriages. Uh, so this will result in a lot more money through the substitution, uh, but you'll notice that it also reduces the infrastructure. So it's like you're, you're trading you know, more transportation for less infrastructure. Uh, so yeah, it's probably best in our case, since we want to spread the rails, to just keep on building railroads. And uh, it's, it's worth so much money right now that they're able to be profitable as we uh, continue to build these. Uh, so let's go ahead and get more rails going. Uh, so we're going down through the south right now, and I think we're going to continue doing that because you'll notice the infrastructure is pretty low all throughout the south. So let's just continue going south. And, uh, yeah, we're keeping those uh, gold reserves going, so we'll just build one more. 
And yeah, we'll just keep on building down here. As long as the as long as the transportation is the, the most expensive good, then we'll continue to focus on rails. As far as the uh, conflict with Mexico, I mean, we, what we could do is we could wait until we finish this here. And what do we need to do to... Oh, okay, we gotta get the rail transportation up. But can't really do that until we get the... Uh, uh, until we get the transportation costs reduced. So we just keep on working railways, I suppose. And also keeping the railways going will allow us to eventually get this here, because we gotta get that building uh, in Detroit up to level three, the motor industries. Uh, so as we continue to build these rails, we'll see those engines getting more expensive. And so we'll need to work on that. Uh, clothes is actually kind of expensive in our market. So that's all stuff we're gonna have to do as well. And we'll just kind of slowly work on it. It's not really a race. Just take our time. We'll, we'll see uh, GDP continue to increase. Same thing with literacy, population, and even the standard of living. Uh, all that will continue to increase as we just kind of slowly work. Work on this. And I see something different. Okay, it looks like we've gotten the industrialists happy with us. So now we're getting the 10% reduction technology cost reduction and uh, plus 10% capitalist investment pool contribution. All right, so that'll be helpful. Well, we're now getting 10.7 thousand into the investment pool right now. And uh, we also got labor movement, and this is gonna allow us to get higher workplace safety office. But you have a higher minimum expected standard of living from literacy. And that's one of the interesting things about technologies is that some of them have like penalties, ways they can affect your country uh, in, in negative ways. And so you might not want them to spread, but there's not really any way to stop stop them. So if you're playing a different campaign here, where you're being like very traditional, very conservative, uh, and you know maybe very agrarian or something like that, you might not want certain texts to spread to you, and there's no way for you to stop that, and it can result in uh, you know your people uh, demanding more rights or something like that, uh, which is realistic uh, how it spreads like that. Uh, so engines are getting more expensive. We're going to have to you know, improve that soon. Uh, but I I'm still seeing that we're having these clothes problems. And that's affecting all of our pops. So I really think we should do something about that first. Uh, so let's actually go ahead and go into our clothing industries. And see if there's anything I can change here before we go building that. Our textile mills. Uh, just see if there's any anything here. So of course we know we don't want to go with luxury clothes. Yeah, there's nothing, uh, nothing available. So we will have to, to build some more. That's okay. Get more of these textile mills. These can be very profitable throughout, throughout the game. Uh, so we will look to see if there's any ones that we might want to build in. Pennsylvania has a lot of peasants here, uh, and it's profitable for them. So let's build it in Pennsylvania. And then I think we'll wait to get the rails. I was going to get that first, but you know what? Let's. Make sure these engines don't get uh, too expensive. So let's build one more level here. I know it says it's not profitable, guys, but it'll be fine. And I didn't want to do two levels, my bad. But yeah, it's it's still going to be uh, profitable. Uh, they're earning a good little chunk of money here. Uh, so I think it'll be fine uh, as we build more rails out. Uh, we'll actually go ahead and set that up now. Uh, now that we got that going, let's go ahead and get one more railway going and uh, continue building down south. So we're on with the South Carolina now. Uh, so we'll take a look at our construction here. All right, so we're working on those two right now. And, and I'm really glad that I kept the construction kind of low. And we got the tech that we were attempting to research and that's the water tube boilers. Uh, so this has a whole bunch of production methods that are opened up. I mean, really it's just two, but it's for a bunch of locations. And uh, the condensing engine pumps, I think, might be uh, really useful for us to get uh, because they just produce a lot more resources. So we won't need to do any more of those type of mines if we need those resources. Instead, we'll just change them up. Uh, the actual water tube boilers, again, that's just one that reduces the, uh, the labor. So not something that we need at this moment because we've got plenty of labor here in the United States. Uh, so yeah, the, if we need any certain resources, you know, mining resources, then that's how we're going to want to get it. 
We can take a look if we need that now. We also need to get a tech. We'll just see if there's anything getting really expensive. Coal, for instance. I mean, it doesn't mean we have to change all these up. We could just change a, a few of them. Because I think if we changed them all, it would likely be a negative. I mean, you're going to earn a lot more money. Uh, but tools are going to be stupidly expensive. And coal is going to be, you know, really, really cheap. And so the coal mines are going to have trouble earning money. So you definitely don't want to change them all up at the same time. Yeah, we're going to want to wait to do that. Uh, so let's just do it a little bit at a time. Maybe go with some of our bigger locations here. Yeah, I think that'll work out nicely if we just do the four in Pennsylvania. And maybe, I don't know, maybe Ohio. Yeah, they're still going to be profitable here. And then we'll take a look and see how expensive tools have gotten uh, after those adjustments. So we also need to get a tech. And since we are considering going to war with Mexico soon, I think it would make sense to maybe get some military techs. Yeah, I think we're going to work on some military techs. Let me just make sure there's nothing over here that we really, really want. I think we already have a production method to help increase groceries if, if necessary. Uh, mechanized workshops would be useful. I mean, 19 months to get that. But I think getting some military techs would probably be the most most useful thing. Though, we do need this one as well. Hmm. We get that in 17 months. I think we're going to knock that out real quick, guys. Let's go and get it. Because, yeah, we need that uh, in order to, to do that one decision. So I think it makes sense. So Isaac Hole has retired from the Southern Planters. So they have a, a new leader. And we got an event here. Can do attitude. It's in the District of Columbia, DC. Uh, soldiers are complaining that they have no way to open their canned food. Okay, so basically they need can openers. Uh, so we can develop those. That's gonna be very expensive for the government. Or we can say they'll figure it out and so the armed forces will be, you know, a little irritated at us. Uh, how do they feel about us right now? They're just neutral. That's a lot of money, honestly. Yeah, I kind of feel like it's not worth it. If the military was really angry at us right now, then I'd say sure, but I think we're fine. And uh, what is this about? Okay, so this is, you know, we're going to see a lot of these. Some like civil wars and revolts and, and wars between the different countries, you know, revolutions and stuff. All kinds of stuff is going to happen here in South America. And we're going to be called in uh, where we can take part in it if we want to. We don't. I would have to look at both of them and, and see who I'd want to support, and frankly, I don't even care. It doesn't really affect us much. Not right now. We're not really throwing our weight around on the world stage yet. Just really focusing on domestic matters. That war in West Africa finished up. And again, we're just getting notifications about that because we have an interest in the area. And that's all. Uh, we could actually go ahead and build something else. So we're already working on fixing the clothes situation and the engines. So more rails and tools. We'll do another railway. Yeah. So let's go ahead and get this going in Georgia. Yeah, they have low infrastructure down there. We're probably going to build a lot in Florida as well. Let's see if there's any areas around here where it's really bad. Or, you know, maybe there's something here. Not really. All right, so we'll just go with Georgia. Going down the uh, original 13 colonies here. Getting those knocked out. And, and of course, if we ever want to get this done here, then we need to get uh, you know engines up in price. So that we can uh, continue to build, build out there and get it up to level three. Uh, so nothing here that's important. Again, it's just so much. You miss important things. If you don't pay attention to it at all, I thought I'd pause that. Uh, but yeah, it's it's a lot of garbage down there. It all goes away on its own. You can just kind of peek down there. And the luxury clothes are quite expensive, and we can't produce those, so we do have to trade for them. So we might need to set up another trade route. We'll see. Those kind of adjust themselves as well. We're earning pretty good money right now. Yeah, not bad. Uh, the investment pool has really increased quite a bit, as you guys can see. So the industrialization of our country is uh, helping us there. And so we're getting just a lot more money to further industrialize. Uh, the election is upcoming here in this year, 1844. And the Democratic Party does 
uh, seem to have a lot of support. They still have all four of these interest groups involved. And the Whig Party is no longer, uh, you know, a, a combination of interest groups. It's just the intelligentsia. Uh, so that's interesting. So it looks like the evangelicals has have decided to leave the Whig Party. And so the Democrats are just incredibly powerful. I don't really see how we keep them out, out of government. Like, continue to, to keep them out of government. We're eventually going to have to put them back in place. And remember, you know, the Democrats are, are no longer... The Southern Planters. They're not. The Southern Planters aren't even the most powerful party there. So maybe we got to stop looking to the Democrats as the the party of slavery at this point. Slavery is gone. Democrats are changing. They're having to evolve. Hmm. I almost feel like this is not working. Yeah. This feels like this is broken or something. I don't know. I recall just firing once. Seems like whatever it's supposed to be doing to end it is not working. I don't know, because again, I don't recall that firing over and over and over again. But yeah, that's exactly what's uh, happening here. We got the field works. Okay. So that's uh, that nice 10% army defense modifier. Uh, is there anything that we can change up with our barracks? I haven't actually looked at that in a while. Uh, just see if we want to, to change anything. It's best to do it now. Uh, that's actually going to be over here. Uh, it's, it's best to do that now. You know, before the war, so we know like how much our uh, all of our our goods is going to cost us. Uh, so the reason why everybody's not on skirmish infantry is because of Texas. So if we just put them on the skirmish infantry, then that will uh, fix the issue up here. And it looks like everybody's not on mobile artillery either. Is that also because of Texas? Yeah. So that's all when we annexed Texas. That's causing the problems there. We could have just changed it here, and it would have done that for all of them as well. Uh, see if there's anything else. Nope, that's it. Okay, so that'll just you know, increase the the need for artillery and, and uh, ammunition and small arms by a little bit. Not going to have a huge effect there. Yeah, I did want to see if we had anything available that we weren't making use of. And you know what? We're going to get... I mean, we're, we're doing so good on money. We're going to go ahead and start getting a lot of stuff building. Uh, so, you know, we're, we're continuing working on rails. we got those two going now. Uh, and then the clothes clearly has not... Uh, the issue there has clearly not been fixed. Uh, despite that one uh, building we constructed, so we're going to need to get that. Uh, the sulfur, remember the sulfur mine, so we can go ahead and uh, change that production method. Uh, same thing with the groceries. That's That can be dealt with in the production methods. Uh, porcelain, I want to say that also can be dealt with in production methods. Uh, so really, it's not much that can be dealt with in production methods. Same with that. So we could just change a lot of this up in the production methods. So we're probably going to go ahead and continue getting rails then. Is what I'm thinking, uh, as well as the uh, the clothes problem needs to be dealt with too. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that first. So we want to do the textile mills. We'll see if any of these are going to be profitable enough to warrant building. Yeah, we'll do Massachusetts. Why not? It'll produce our our clothes for us, and uh, then rails. We get more rails, guys. I, I wish there was a way to sort this based off of the infrastructure, since I mean that's what it does. Improves infrastructure. Uh, we can't just hover through here. But obviously, that's not the most efficient way of doing that here. Uh, we know we're going to want to build in Florida, so we can go ahead and, and build it down to there. Uh, I did want to see if there's any problems up here where I didn't build. I mean, like, if you wanted to get more in Connecticut, you're going to need rails there. Same thing with Rhode Island. They're all looking kind of low. Yeah, over here, it's it's pretty low. So it makes sense to go ahead and get rails going everywhere here. So we're going to build it rails throughout New England area. Get those done. And um, I guess we'll wait to do any more than that and see how the engines look, the cost of them. And uh, we can fix all those other issues through here. So with the food industries, I don't know how much we're going to want to adjust this just yet. And this is liquor, so we don't want to do that. Uh, that's that canneries. We've been changing those up. That's, that's how we've been trying to... Uh, uh, to improve the, the grocery production. We only did the, the one so far. So we can go ahead and do another one like in a high place the, like Kentucky here. That's going to produce a lot more groceries. Also going to require more iron, less grain though, and more fish. So I might just want to do like a couple at a time here is what I'm thinking. And maybe also do Carolina. North Carolina. Alright, so that works. So we've got the grocery issue at least slightly improved. Uh, the tool workshop. 
So yeah, that's just gonna help them with the... It will result in them having more money. So I almost wanna do that. It's gonna help the tooling workshops out. Not that they typically need a lot of assistance, but that'll get more laborers out, out there as well. And we can do this before we build too many of them. That's what I'm most worried about, because once you start changing these up and you got all these people employed, I mean, right there, it's 10.5 thousand. Those are all people who lose their job and aren't gonna be happy. So yeah, let's do it earlier. Uh, you can see we are getting a lot of radicals as well right now. So we'll do that for the tooling workshops. Of course, that's not gonna fix the, the uh, tool shortages. Uh, so we will have to probably build another tooling workshop somewhere. So I think everything else is in the rural category here. So we got coal mines. We know we want to improve these with those condensing engine pumps. Of course, gotta be careful with it due to the tool prices. So let's not do them all. Uh, so yeah, we'll just do a few of these at a time here. Have we done Pennsylvania? Yeah, we've done Pennsylvania. So let's go ahead and do Ohio. We've done Ohio. Uh, we'll do Montana then. It's gonna go down here. Probably just easier to do it that way. Uh, so just a little bit at a time here. You know, make sure that we don't, you know, increase the cost of tools too fast. Uh, iron mines is another thing that we need to do this for. And uh, again, can't do them all. That's gonna cause a lot of issues. So just a little bit of time here. We'll just do it in Pennsylvania since we have four other buildings there. Uh, lead, another one. So let's go with Illinois. Sulfur, we know sulfur is something we want more of. Uh, so let's go with Michigan. Of course, uh, tools are gonna get very expensive, so we already know we're gonna need to uh, to build those out. Uh, fishing wharfs, I don't think there's anything here for us to do here, we just need to, we'll have to build those somewhere. So tooling workshops, let's go ahead and get those going since there wasn't anything we could do there as far as PMs go. Uh, so we're going to build another one. Let me see where we currently got them. New York and Illinois. Yeah, it looks like we could probably get a much better profit somewhere else. Uh, so let's go ahead and see where we want to get this going. So Florida could do some tools. Yeah, you might want to do it in Florida. Uh, Alabama has a lot of pops. This is Georgia. A lot of peasants. What is in Georgia? Because we do want to make sure that these, these peasants... Uh, particularly in the states that have a lot of them. They got jobs to, to move into. So we'll do it in Georgia. And uh, I suppose we could do it in multiple places. Because the, the tools are going to get more and more expensive. In fact, if we just built a bunch of these, then we could change all those, make all those adjustments. Yeah, so you know what? Let's do Alabama as well. Just kind of spread it out a little bit. And maybe even get one in Illinois, even though that you know says it's not going to be very profitable. Well, let's do it anyways. Because uh, tools are going to get very expensive here soon as we make these adjustments. And, and might want to spread these around a little bit too so that you're not, you know, maybe something like that. And we got an event, Whistle Stop Tour. So it's an election event. Uh, Kermit Lodge, he's the leader of the Southern Planters, right? Yep. Uh, he intends to travel across North Carolina by train to campaign for the Democratic Party. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, this is firing now, right as we're building all these railroads. It makes sense that a politician want to, you know, show himself on the rails. Uh, there's a lot of people who were, who were scared of the trains uh, at first because they went so fast. Uh, there were some people who were thinking that uh, they went so fast that they could potentially cause serious harm to the human body uh, because the human body wasn't designed to go at that speed. Uh, so there's there's a lot of people who are scared uh, to go on the trains. Uh, so politicians would go on them and show, hey, look, they're safe, I'm, I'm riding on them. Uh, but we have uh, two options here. Campaign by rail is a smart move, uh, which it is. It'll increase momentum for the Democratic Party, though. And also, North Carolina is going to, to lose some railway building throughput because they're stressing out the, the rail network. Or you say, it'd be a shame if that campaign train kept suffering delays. And then, uh, yeah, that would actually hurt North Carolina quite a bit and decrease momentum for the Democrats. Yeah, sure, why not? We'll do that. Poor North Carolina, they're getting all, they're getting their economy hurt from political games. Democratic Party has a lot of support, so that's not gonna make a, a big impact. They're clearly going to, to win this election. And uh, quite strongly, I, I do think we will have to uh, put them in our government. 
so we got nitroglycerin increasing the resource discovery chance and that's automatic uh, so that's it's good to have it for that uh, but you know a lot of these here are just too costly in my opinion uh, I'm not willing to risk my people we'll wait till we get dynamite instead because you'll notice that when you get the if I can get over there it does not have the increased mortality uh, so I think we'll just skip over there so not even not even use them uh, but this is is helpful uh, you know if you start having uh, problems with the the cost of explosives that's helpful so we did not research that that was more tech spread uh, now we're getting baking powder that'll be for food industries they already looked at that that's a very convincing win 69 percent uh, so now we're gonna want to change up our government I'm imagining that it's very low legitimacy here uh, and the evangelicals actually want to join the Democratic Party. Now, what's interesting here is that the industrialists want to join the Whig Party. Now, one thing that uh, might confuse some people, well, that actually gets legitimacy in a good place, is you notice we cannot confirm this. It won't let us. Uh, that's because if somebody wants to join the party that's in government, you have to do it, or, or else just not reform your government. You have no choice in the matter. Uh, so we could throw them over here and that would give us a lot more legitimacy and we wouldn't have to put the Democratic Party in power. Now, having them in power would allow us to do some some things because the armed forces is uh, a part of this, this party, but yeah, overall we'd be quite limited uh, on laws uh, if we put them in place, so we're not going to. I like this much better. Uh, the industrialists are now in the government for the first time, I think. I don't think we put them in government yet. Uh, so this results in a pretty pretty strong coalition here. I think this will work out nicely. Uh, so I was going to confirm that. Legitimacy isn't too bad. And maybe go ahead and take a look at some laws. See if there's anything we want to do now that we have the industrialists in power. Uh, so that will change up what's available for our, the uh, health system. It's just going to be the private health insurance. Uh, which, you know, we could do that without anybody opposing it. Because remember, the industrialist didn't uh, oppose the, the public health insurance. Uh, so we could do that. But I still want to do the local police force. And I think we're going to try it again. Yeah, let's let's make another attempt here, guys. 22% chance. And let's see if we can't get it done. I think it's important to reduce in the, the power of the southern planters uh, to get that finished up. Not to mention it'll allow us to invest further in it without the fear of, uh, you know, strengthening them. Uh, we can see that bureaucracy is currently a problem, so we're going to need to do something about that. All right, so uh, we're going to need to to build more government administrations. Uh, so we'll do that now. Just get them in there. We need more universities as well. So maybe we'll take care of that at the same time. Now that we have the gold reserves back up a bit, uh, so as far as where we're going to build these, yeah, I like building... You really do need to build in places that have a high population. And, you know, the number of peasants isn't a, you know, a true indicator of the, the total population. Uh, but, yeah, that's what we're going to use for now. Uh, so we're going to go with uh, Ohio here. Build it up in Ohio and maybe Illinois since I don't have one yet. And that's probably not going to be enough. But we'll just build those two for now. And then a university as well. Let's see. Could it increase... Massachusetts, but I think we're going to do it in Pennsylvania. I've got a soft spot for Pennsylvania, guys. Uh, obviously, I grew up in Philadelphia, so. And uh, I loved living in the state back in the day. I haven't been there a long time. I left, uh, let's see, I left when I was 17. So it's almost 20 years. Yeah, almost 20 years since, since I was in PA. Been a long time. But yeah, it's uh, a place I lived for many, many years. Over here in Philadelphia. Uh, also lived up here in the, the Poconos as well, though. I lived up there for a little while. It's uh, cold. <laughs> Very cold. You get a lot of snow. Uh, I worked at a, a ski resort uh, for a little while. Serving rich people. <laughs> yeah, I worked at a ski resort. I worked there for a couple winters. Two winters. I'd go up there. Even when I, I didn't live up there anymore, uh, I would travel up there to go work there because I can make a lot of money in tips uh, because rich people are there all the time. So it was very profitable. So I liked uh, I liked going up there. After I worked the one winter, I decided to go back. It wasn't uh, a bad job at all. 
And uh, what was interesting about that ski resort is during the summertime, they had a a water park there. Uh, They turned into a water park. And I worked at the water park one, one summer. So the evangelicals have expressed their concerns about government decisions, clearly favoring the interest of the industrious. Another event you see quite a bit. And it's just basically picking and choosing here who you kind of want to support. And, uh, you know, I don't really care that they're irritated. They're not even in government anymore. And uh, I think they're going to become less and less important in our country. Just the routes uh, we've gone so far. I think they're going to lose a a lot of power. Uh, Which isn't exactly historical. Evangelicals here in America have always had quite a bit of an influence. Uh, So we've gotten this knocked out. We just wanted to do that real quick. Uh, that'll help us out with that one journal entry. And uh, now we're going to start working on the military, guys. I know there's a lot of good stuff available to us, uh, but if we're going to do this war at Metzka, let's make sure we have the most advanced uh, technology. Uh, triage, very helpful. Problem is that it requires opium. I did this in both of my uh, previous campaigns, and I almost kind of regretted it because opium was like stupidly expensive. I didn't need a lot of it, but it was so expensive, there's nobody to trade with for it. Uh, so it was kind of difficult to, to keep that going. Uh, so I, I did, but it was just a really expensive good that I kept paying for to, you know, to save people's lives. Uh, but yeah, I don't think we're going to do it in this one, guys. Uh, simply because it's so difficult to get early on anyways. Unless you go like, you know, find a way to, to become part of the opium production industry. Because uh, it just isn't available uh, through the AI. I think rifling is a clear choice here. Uh, this is the, you know, army. And this is the, the Navy, uh, or, or just fleet-based stuff, because uh, this doesn't actually have that much to do with the, the fleet. It you know, allows you to build more civilian ports, higher level. Uh, but we're going to go with rifling, guys. I think that makes the most sense. And we're also getting the tech spread, so we'll be able to get it pretty quick, 5 to 10 months. So that'll be helpful to have for the war with Metzko. Uh, we got realism. That's more prestige. And... Modern sewage is the next one. Yeah, we actually need that. That'll help out with infrastructure. Uh, many states are having some infrastructure problems, so or they're not having problems yet, but it is getting uh, a little bit lower. Uh, and it looks like the trade route for fabric is unproductive. Well, that's interesting. Because we just built that uh, clothing industry, so you think it'd be more expensive. Oh, it's because we're exporting it. That makes sense, so it is more expensive. That's why it's less profitable. Um, yeah, I mean, we're, we're going to have our own clothing industry, a domestic clothing industry, so we don't need to, to do that. Uh, in fact, we might want to take a look in, at our, our trade system in general and see if there's any adjustments we want to make. So this is the import route. I'll probably continue to import it for now. Eventually, that's another thing we're going to have uh, that we really focus on is having our own domestic uh, furniture industry. Uh, there's a tech that allows to to produce the uh, silk, and then with that, we'll be able to produce the luxury uh, clothing as well. And so then we don't need to trade for anything with furniture or clothing. Uh, we could just you know do it completely on our own. Uh, but yeah, we're going to continue importing this for now until we're able to kind of build that out. Uh, the clothes we're importing that, and I think clothes are. Still kind of a, I mean, they're not too bad, but uh, this is a lot. So if we, we take that out of the market, it would increase the price of clothes quite a bit. And you know what? We might not even have gotten to that yet. No, no, we did. We got to it. Uh, coffee. This is something we're going to have to consistently trade for. We don't have the ability to produce that. Uh, dye, another thing that we can't really produce just yet until we get a certain tech. So we're going to have to continue to import that as well. Uh, the luxury clothes, as I said before, we, we won't be able to change that just yet. Ammunition's being exported. And that's the only way it's uh, profitable at all right now, despite only having one factory. So we do have to keep that going. Uh, so it looks pretty good, everything that we're doing now. Let's see if we can't export something that's really cheap right now. So this is what they're recommending. Let's take a look for ourselves, though, and see uh, what we might want to export. So aren't we trading for sugar, which is super cheap? How much sugar are we trading for right now? It's a lot. It is quite a bit. All right, so if we, we took that out of the market, would that have a hugely negative effect? Probably not. Yeah, but one thing to think about is that, you know, we're, we're using that in the food industries. 
and so the food industries wouldn't be as profitable. So I think we'll keep the, the trade going for now, as long as it's it's profitable overall. Uh, the dyes, it looks like we're trading for a lot there, so we could reduce the amounts, but man, we're not gonna do that, it, it's fine. Again, as long as it's profitable, and they'll, they'll adjust uh, to try and keep it profitable. Uh, luxury furniture, these are all things that we're trading for, and they're really cheap. Uh, fruit, and yeah, it looks like meat. Might be the, the thing we wanna trade. And that was one of the things they suggested. Uh, liquor is eventually going to get more and more expensive, and, and really, these values here aren't actually that bad right now. Now, tobacco might be something we want to ship around the world, uh, because we have a lot of uh, you know locations, a lot of states that can, can produce that. Uh, quite a few, in fact. So we might want to really start producing a ton of tobacco and start trading it off, uh, particularly as pops become rich, they want more uh, tobacco, more liquor opium if, if they have it, access to it uh, they want those intoxicants uh, as they get richer and so we can make a lot of money from tobacco or our pops can make a lot of money and we'll make money through the uh the taxes and stuff uh so yeah that's that's something we might want to work on in the future for right now let's set up an export route for meat I'm just trying to increase the, the price of that a little bit so we're just looking for productivity um, but again we want to make sure we're not trading up too much in fact we could probably do both of these because it's, it's really not trading much in either one of those instances those are the only two are profitable they're not very profitable either because again meat isn't really that cheap in our market at the moment but yeah it'll, it'll help out some pops get them some jobs and uh this is another situation down here guys that we don't really care about uh, so yeah we're just going to declare ne neutrality in it and we did finish up here with Montana okay I didn't even realize that uh, so we might want to to do a couple things with that uh, first of all there's no real reason to have the colonial affairs anymore uh, so we can't just get rid of it uh, because it's a law we'd have to actually pass the law to get rid of it uh, what we can do is reduce the level which will get us some more of that nice bureaucracy. So we're gonna actually go ahead and reduce that. That's gonna be 50 weeks uh, from now. And because we wanna increase the law enforcement once we pass that law, we won't do anything else with our bureaucracy just yet. We'll just get that nice, nice little passive modifier to the state construction for now. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at that journal entry over here. Uh, so we got the slavery debate. That's already happening uh, because slavery's been banned and it'll be 10 years, uh, 10 years before this little meter here will fill up and we would have completed that. As far as the decisions here, can't do the frontier wars, you won't be able to do that until you own uh, all of Kansas and all of Colorado, so that is gonna require war with Mexico. Uh, same thing here, obviously, uh, that'll require the war with Mexico. What I wanna look at was the Oregon border dispute. Yeah, all we have to do now is map the American Western frontier. Okay, excellent. So we'd want to take that decision as soon as we're able to, which for some reason we're not able to because we don't have the characters. Okay, so that makes sense. Uh, we need to go ahead and uh, get the the generals uh, that we need. I'm thinking one general and one admiral, uh, I think would be the, the best way to go here. Uh, so let's go into the military mode. And I'm gonna see, that's another thing we need to do is build up our troops before the war with Mexico because frankly, our standing army is, uh, pathetic. Now, we don't have to use only standing army troops, but yeah, I'd prefer to have more than what we currently have. So we're going to want to build those up in the Midwest, New England. Uh, the Dixie region, they have seven. Let's maybe build that up a little bit more. Uh, but yeah, basically, I think the general that we want to appoint is one in the Dixie HQ. Yeah, that makes sense. And uh, then with the admirals, I mean, there's really only one choice with the admirals because there's only one place that has a ton of ships. Let's go ahead and get another general first, and this is going to be for the Dixie HQ. And uh, we have two different choices here, William Shubrick and Judah Carey. He's with the armed forces. Remember, this is important because this will result in them getting more influence. Uh, and he's with the Southern Planters. Uh, we can see their, their traits as well, and those are going to have obvious effects in the upcoming war. Uh, he's actually a naval guy, despite the fact that he's an experienced naval commander, but yeah, he's going up for a general here. And, and I've seen that before. Uh, I've seen admirals who have like general traits and stuff. Uh, you can't can't flip-flop what you hire him for, though. Uh, like, these guys are only available as generals. 
we would be able to hire him as like a, uh, a naval commander instead is what I mean. Uh, so yeah, that's I think still going to give us the 20% offense and defense though. I think you still get that. But obviously the rough water's chance that would not impact us on land. Uh, the supply requisitions expert. That's pretty good. Yeah, that'd be helpful. He's direct. So as commander, that's increased offense and uh, increased chance of 100% aggressive maneuver chance. He'll also be more popular overall. And he's an experienced offensive planner. All right, so he's going to have a very good offensive ability. I think he's the obvious choice, not just because of these traits here, but uh, him being in the armed forces rather than the southern planters is key. Uh, is he Dixie? Let me see here. He is a Dixie, so he is from the south, uh, as is this character here. Uh, makes sense because of the where we're hiring him, but that's not always the case. Uh, you'll, you'll often get it flip-flopped. You're hiring over here in New England, and it's a, a Dixie general, or, or vice versa. Uh, but we can look at his traits real quick, just see what we're losing here. He's persistent, so he gets those bonuses, expensive taste, just really just the popularity. It only impacts him if he's a ruler. Uh, pillager, that's more devastation. Not exactly a good thing in territory that you're conquering. And then uh, Diplomat as well. Uh, but yeah, he's clearly the, the best choice here. Uh, William Schubert. So we got him hired, and uh, then we also wanted to get ourselves a new admiral too. And like I said, there's only one real choice here. Dixie HQ's got five ships. New England HQ has 25. Now, in order to do naval invasions, the uh, HQ for the fleet has to be in the same location of the HQ for that army. Uh, so basically, the New England HQ can only do naval invasions for the uh, New England HQ, you know, army, uh, you know, army base. And, and that actually took me a little while to figure out because nothing in the game really told me that. Uh, I just had, I had like one general that could do naval invasions and I couldn't figure out why. I had the fleet and I, I was like, I wanted somebody else to do it. You know, I had a, another army and commander who I wanted to send on the naval invasion and it wouldn't let me. And I was like, God, I, I don't understand what's, because I thought it was something different about the general. I thought, you know, maybe it's because this general was on standby or because this general had, you know, finished mobilizing. I was trying to figure everything out. And it turned out the, the reason why there's only one choice is because he has to be from the same HQ. So, eh, that's kind of a negative sometimes, but uh, that's the way the game works. Uh, so if we want to do a naval invasion with this fleet here, then we'd have to assign a general to the New England uh, HQ and, and probably build them up some too. But that's the plan. We're going to do all that anyways. Because uh, we will be doing a naval invasion in Mexico. Uh, we want to open up a new front. Uh, so let's go ahead and get somebody appointed here. So we got Matthew Perry, a uh, historical character. And he's 51 years old at this point in time. And he has the innovative 100% surprise maneuver chance. He's an explorer. That's actually what we need for the expedition opportunities. He'll probably be the one we send on this expedition. Hopefully nothing happens to him. And then Dockyard Organizer. Uh, he's armed forces as well. So again, a very clear choice here. we got a Southern Planters character, innovative. He's also an explorer and a popular commander. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and do him. Matthew Perry, of course. Alright, so uh, that's who we're going to be sending onto this expedition. And now that we have three generals or admirals, that will allow us to do this decision, map the American Western Frontier. Send out an expedition to map the unknown geography of the Western Frontier. So now we gotta pick who we're gonna send. And we're gonna send, and you get these three choices. I don't know if you get uh, like a fourth or fifth choice if you have more than three. I'm not entirely sure, I think you just get the three. So, cause I've, I've had it before. And I wanna say you just get the three choices, so sometimes you won't get to pick. Maybe who would be the best option if they're just not available. Uh, but we're going to do Matthew Perry because he has that explorer trait. And that uh, helps him out doing these expeditions. So there's going to be a bunch of events tied to this. Uh, so basically you have a, a progress rating on this and a peril rating. If the peril gets too high, then you fail the expedition. And once the progress completely fills up, you succeed. Uh, so you'll get a bunch of events tied to it. And, uh, you know, it'll change the progress in peril, either reduce or increase it. Uh, this does cost money as well while you're doing it. It's not like a ton of money, but yeah, it does cost a little bit of money uh, to keep it going. It's pretty much irrelevant. Uh, but essentially, yeah, there's these these uh, 
events that will fire uh, as they're as they're doing it. And sometimes this can take a really long, long time, guys. I've seen it take years before. Uh, so we'll see if we can't get it done. It'll give us something to do while we continue to prepare for this conflict with Metsco because we got to build up our army a little bit and uh, get some some techs. Uh, the tech we're currently working on, the rifling tech. We want to get that knocked out before we start the conflict. Uh, so I hope you guys did enjoy today's episode. If you did, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. Do hope to see you guys on the next one, and thanks for watching.